Hey, fish heads, Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates, and today we're going to be making this guy look like this guy. Let's get started. For the purposes of time in this video, I've already primed this bait, which means I've used a self-etching primer after I've sanded it by hand. Then I put a white base coat on, then I put a black base coat on. The only other things that we're gonna be doing to this, we've already added the red eyes as requested by the customer. He asked for normal eyes. He said the eyes that came on here were kind of tattered and falling apart, so I've added some new eyes. And these are hatch matching. This is uh, the pattern that he wanted me to duplicate, so I have done that on these. And the foghorn on these. So pretty cool. Uh, basically, it's uh, taken me back to when I was mixing colors a long time ago and trying to make sure that the pattern is as close to match as we can. Uh, one of the things that I used to pride myself on doing and given the cleanest look that I possibly can as well. So in the background, this is not a shop update, but I have done uh, a few hand detailed pieces as of uh, recent. One that looked just like this, just finished um, its journey down to Texas for Parker Willis. He is a guide on OH Ivy, so he's, uh, he's got some fun stuff to do. So this is the mirror carp. And as I go along in, in this journey of mine here, I find that I have a lot more fun doing hand detailed stuff and it's just it's just a whole lot cooler for me to do little things like this when I get the chance uh, as opposed to runs of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of baits which I also love doing that's my bread and butter and it keeps me alive through show season but the creative part of me loves stuff like this. Just as a disclaimer this is a river to sea loon this is their pattern. I am not claiming it as my own. I am duplicating it for a client on this Hyper Shad, and it's going to be so much fun to do. So this is their pattern, not mine. Um, just wanted to give credit where credit is due. I don't want any kind of legal activity coming from River to Sea because I love you guys. I love your Whopper Ploppers. Um, huge fan, and they are super productive. This is actually one of my favorite patterns of all time. So let's see if we can replicate it on this Hyper Shad. There are a number of things that work pretty well. Uh, most of them are Japanese pens and paint type related stuff. The stuff that I find myself using more often than not anymore are these Artezas. Um, I have a bunch of them. They come in all different colors of paint, but primarily I'm using the golds, the chromes, the blacks, and the whites if I have to do any detailing on that. If you guys are going to be using paint, make sure that it's airbrush type paint or acrylic or lacquer, something that you would put on your bait that you can seal. Um, I wouldn't use watercolor. I wouldn't use oil paint, any random stuff. Um, some things work very well on baits, like when I've done the Mandalorian scenes and Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. Some things do not. We're going to use this and just going to put a little bit in this cup here. That should be more than enough to paint both sides if I choose to. For learning purposes, I've got a scrap piece of black paper, which is going to show white a little bit better. And you can see that this is super thin. These are the jelly rolls. They're also made in Japan. Artezas or Arteza. This is a push down. Sometimes you get spots like this. So you kind of have to roll that out and then you can start to draw with them. Um, you just have to be careful. Don't do this on the bait. Do it off to the side like I am here. And usually once you get started, the paint flows pretty easily and you can just go to town there. Uniballs, a little bit thicker. You can definitely have a good time with these as well. So just to kind of give you the thicknesses, this is very fluid ink, 
where the Jelly Roll is a gel pen. So if I had to choose between the two, I would definitely go with the Signo, which is the Uniball, versus the Jelly Roll on this project. So we'll keep our Signos in, in the mix. We'll keep our Artezas, Artezas. Arteza, please, by all means, tell me what I'm saying and if it's wrong. So there's also the Sakura Pen Touch, which I don't mess around with a whole lot, but I did buy a couple for this project just to see what it was gonna be like. And let's take a look at what this looks like. This is also a push through, probably like these Artezas. And this is a fine point, so on these things, you'll notice that the, the tip of it pushes in and that's what releases the paint. And this is fairly easy to do that with. And the thickness is a little bit thicker, but it looks like it's a little bit more absorbent than that Arteza. That Arteza is very bright, whereas this Sakura just kind of, now that made it, it might be a little bit different on the bait itself, but what I'm looking at, I think Arteza wins the day on that one too. It's just a little sloppier. You just gotta be careful with it. Got a new piece of black paper down here. And last but not least, I wanna show you the detail brush. This is a double zero. And I've got my gloves on cause I'm handling the bait. Um, just as a reminder for you guys, if you're not used to doing hand detailing or anytime you're touching a bait, oils transfer from your hands. So make sure you glove up when you're gonna use the bait. And I'm just gonna do, I've decided to take this off the helping hands and give you guys uh, just a true top down. And I wanna make sure my bait's centered. So we're gonna kinda keep it in the lines here. And the first thing I want to do is bring this in. And we're going to move from left to right for me, which should be when I flip this, when I'm editing this video for you guys, um, it should be the same. So I'm just going to take a regular brush and do this first part here. And I'm steadying my hand against my other hand, which even if you shake, even if you guys are a little unsteady with your hands, you can use simple things like your other hand to help accomplish steadying yourself. So you'll see that there is immediately a little bit of thickness difference. And that's probably because I'm not using a flat brush, but I've found that these work really, really well. And if I need to go through and do it again, then I'll be able to do that. And I thought that this would be a good project just to show you in real time how long a project like this can take and that there's actually a good bit of effort that goes into things like this. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then we're going to look at the rest of the bait. We're going to see that there's some dots here. There's the feather and the wing and there's a little bit of detail on the bottom and then there's their signature river to sea, whopper plopper. And this is their 130, this is a larger one. And then on their plopper, on the spin, the blade in the back, there are some dots. So I think the wing is gonna come to about here on the bait, and then the dots will be behind it. And we're gonna try and get as much detail in as we can. And we're gonna start out, let me get my water so that I can keep my brush clean. And we'll keep that just off camera. I think we're gonna start out here with this Arteza. And we're gonna come in right here. 
Now one thing, sometimes you have to angle your pen, so make sure that you know where your angles are. You might want to practice on paper like this first as we go through. And then we're just going to flesh out the wings behind it. Generally, with these paint markers, if you keep a flow going, it'll load itself and you won't have to keep pushing in to get paint. Sometimes it'll clog up. It just depends on if it's a, a good pen or not. These Artezas are pretty decent. I've had a few issues with them here and there where I just can't get the paint to load. But for the most part, these are not bad. So you'll notice some of the, uh, the lines get a little bit longer as this wing keeps going. And of course, it's not going to be exact. All of these are exact because somebody's designed this. I don't know who the designer was on this River to Sea project, but it's a really cool design and it's very unique. Um, but then they'll go and, and image it. They'll take a really good high definition photograph of it and image it. And then it is machine painted, not, not wrapped. This is not a wrap. This is a machine paint. And some of the stuff that they have in Japan is outstanding. It's incredible. Even some of the stuff that the machinery that they have in China, is really, really good. Um, but that's where you kind of lose the, the grassroots part of the, the bait making, because when it's no longer a human touch on this, super cool. And it's always going to be the exact same image because the machine has taken the picture and does that repetitively over and over. But you lose a little, little something there, if that makes any sense. I know that I'm not talking any kind of trade secrets here. They've been imaging for years and years and years. There's lots of YouTube videos you guys can see on it. Um, Duo Realis has got some good videos, as does, I think Strike King shows a little bit, but they also have a fair amount of um, hand-painted people that, that still do it by hand. Now we're just going to start this. I'm going to try and get on the inside. One thing I've always tried to preach to you guys, and I'm going to jump around here just a little bit. Uh, is to be thorough. So if you have a bait, don't just hit it with paint on the outside. Get to the inside too because as this glide is moving through the water, the joints are moving on it. And if you have this stark white middle that doesn't have paint on it, it doesn't look real. Like it doesn't look as natural. So if you can, without gooking up the, the joints or the pen on these glides, try and get your paint in as as best you can and then we're just going to come around just like that does in a very similar pattern and again i'm not trying to image this exactly the way the designer intended it it's going to be my own version of it um, but i do want to pay homage to whoever you are that designed this bait it's super cool and then it looks like back here we've just got some, now this wraps all the way around the bait, so I'm going to do that, but I need to let the sides dry first. So on camera, we're just going to do one side at a time. And as that dries, then I'll do the other side. But this is just the neatest, and it's a good break from normal patterns that I do. And it's not impossible for you guys to accomplish. This Arteza pen relatively quickly will dry too. It doesn't take forever to dry. And you can heat set it. Now this has, the, the top is a little bit different. I'm going to close this up. 
You don't want the tips to dry out either. It's another helpful tip on a tip, if that makes any sense. Kind of doing a continual shot here because this is just real time. And I want to go over with a second layer, this collar here around the gill plate, because we're going to add black ink. If you guys can see this, but we're going to add black ink into this, this part right there. So giving this a second coat will kind of get rid of the, the depth issue where it's a little bit darker in some spots than it is light. And then get that in water. Take a sip of coffee. How are you guys doing? It's been a while since we've done anything like this. Um, I know that I've given test strips and stuff and, and taught about different types of things that I use, but this is the first demonstration of hand painting. And if you guys want to see more stuff like this, smash that thumbs up and give me a comment in the description below so I'll know to do more stuff like this for you guys. Like if you guys want to see how I hand paint this mirror carp, let me know. Coffee is really, really good this morning. Let me move this off camera here. I do love my coffee. So on the side that's kind of out of view for you guys, um, and I'm gonna let it slide back down there, there's just like some, some feather scratches and some more dots. So we're gonna get that on there in the bottom. And then just some little down to a point. And on one side here, I'm just gonna do my signature, which is the J-E-K. And then once this dries, we are going to go ahead and put some black in there. And that I think looks fairly good. Again, it's not exact, but it's pretty darn close. And for putting it on a glide bait, I hope my, my client's happy with this. I'd fish this. The biggest thing is you have to make sure that the paint, whatever you use, like these, is sealable, which means you need to make sure that either your clear coat, your 2K, your epoxy is not going to smear this out, which is why I did not go with the Sharpie only because I know that regular Sharpie markers, now this is an acrylic, um, but this is also oil-based. So anything that's oil-based, you can't clear coat. So word of the wise, make sure you know, it's, it's either gotta be an alcohol ink, which the alcohol evaporates, or an acrylic-based ink. I heat set this on the gill plate. I now have an Arteza black marker which I just want to make sure that it's flowing well before I, yep, it's doing good. So now we're just gonna make some little lines on both sides the way they have it. And one more. Now this is, um, what kind of chrome is this? Some random, probably bought it on Amazon. But the chrome itself is really good. There's probably maybe four or five companies that actually make the chrome and then they just distribute it. So it's pretty shiny. And we've got, let's see, how many did they do here? One, two, three. So we're gonna come in, do the middle here two and three and there's our chrome and one side is done I'm gonna let this dry I'm gonna do just a little bit maybe on the bottom here in the white dots and then we'll flip it over I am gonna try see what the collar would look like with this Arteza pen And see which one I like better. 
this uh, this pen might win the day. There's a really good chance that this is going to be my go-to moving forward. It looks like it's distributing pretty evenly. Still might need a second coat on it, which is fine. go. And now we just need to put these lines on. There we go. And that, folks, is my rendition of the Whopper Plopper Loon Pattern. I hope you guys have enjoyed playing along. I hope that you uh, make some endeavors and, and try some different things on your baits or whatever it is that you're painting. Hope I've been able to teach you guys a few things and I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Baits. Here's what we've got for the reveal. Hopefully I did this pattern some justice. Whoever you are that designed it, thank you so much. You've given the world a great loon pattern. And the other side. Thanks again for joining. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. I'm going to do a whole update on everything else, but in the meantime, here is the clear coat on the bait, both sides, just real quick, showing you this. Um, hey, so I don't know. I wear this a lot because I love what, um, what Big Gus is able to do for the community, but just super quick. Get a hold of him. I don't know if he has any more of these bands left, but if you want to wear a really kick-ass swim bait culture, swim baits for autism band, um, get with Big Gus. Go message him.